We're just two guys with one mission, and we've chosen to accept it for some reason. It's time to tell them what we mean, what we say. A.K.A. Summer of George 81. <laughs> Summer of George! <laughs> um, A.K.A. the one most Weinstein movie ever made. Yeah, this was, uh, this was struggling on many levels. Yeah, um, parts of it were, but overall, fantastic movie. Yeah, it was a pretty good, pretty good movie. Um, of all the ones we've watched so far, this is the most my speed. Like, this is the kind of movie that I watch, like, normally anyway. For funsies. For funsies. Like, mm. big Friday the 13th kind of guy, this is very much in that vein. Normally when we watch the movies, I take pretty detailed notes, so I can mm. remember what was going on. But you were having too much fun this time. No, it's just, it was so, such a standard <laughs> kind oh, it's, of, oh, it was... It's absolute boilerplate. It's very much a boilerplate just slasher movie, movie yeah, that I basically yeah, yeah. just stopped taking notes, because the basic setup is some kids play a prank on... The Jenna caretaker? Yeah, he was a caretaker, caretaker of this of summer, summer camp. camp, and they accidentally get him burned up. Yeah. Once he's recovered from his burns... He takes revenge on he, the camp. He takes revenge He takes revenge on, on on another camp, but it's a different camp. Yeah, but it's just... It's on the same lake, it's just down the river. Yeah, he basically takes revenge on the kids, and then carnage happens. Yeah, so far, so... Eight. Slasher. Yeah, there's lots of teens. Absolutely. They're in trouble and they get killed by a pair of gardening shears yeah. by this person. I can already predict now that the scores at the end are going to be probably round right about the middle. It's not going to be the greatest movie ever made because things like creativity and stuff like that are already out the window because yeah. this is already ripping off something that came out at least a year before. Um, uh, when was, I mean, I haven't seen. I mean, Friday Things 2 at least this. Is completely. You know, I guess one, I have, one not so much. Two is when you get that generic. I've seen a lot of classic slasher movies, but I'm definitely not a completist. There's definitely mm, like yeah, I've yeah. never seen Prom Night, for example. Oh, I have. I've never seen A Happy Birthday to Me. No, I've not seen that one. I've never seen the kebab one. Well, that's what's on the yeah. cover. Yeah. I've never seen April Fool's Day. Oh, I have bollocks. Like. Uh, like I, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that's like considered mm. classic that I haven't seen. Yeah, like yeah, I'm yeah. not like sure, sure, uh, sure. obsessed about the slasher genre, though yeah. I do enjoy a good one. Yeah, and if asked to describe an eighty slasher, you would describe something. Yes, like you would this. describe exactly this thing. Yeah. There's kids. Yeah, yeah. They're trapped. They're away from home. They misbehave. Uh -huh. They swear. They swear. There's nudity. There's smoking. Yeah, smoking. They're all horn dogs. Total horn dogs, including Costanza. <laughs> well. This is something I think we're going to get into for a <laughs> thing. But pretty much, like, by the numbers slasher, mm -hmm. but very much at the beginning of the slasher, like, when yeah. if Before Halloween it got started it, yeah. and then it was just a bunch of rip-offs, mm -hmm. out of all the rip-offs I've seen of, like, uh, Halloween and Friday the 13th, mm -hmm. this is certainly one of the better This ones. is certainly one of the better ones. Absolutely. And there was a big... Now... <laughs> One of the reasons why we have uh, tro I kind of don't want to spoil the plot because, okay. like, if you've seen a slasher movie, you already know what's going on. Yeah. But because this was like an actual studio movie, mm. looks good. It looks good. It feels good. It sounds good. Everyone acts pretty well. Yeah. To the uh, to the point. It's a, it's a it's a very easy, comfortable fit. Again, the most comfortable thing for me to sit down and watch of all the things that we've done so far. Yeah. But it also means there's a lot of actors before they were famous. Oh, good God, yes. One of which is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I got, uh, one of which is Jason Alexander from Seinfeld, yeah. who is pretty much playing, playing George young, Costanza, George Costanza. young George Costanza. Yeah. He's like, uh, his mannerisms are the same, the yeah. way he enters a room is the same. Yeah. It was... The really only difference is he has hair, which, because of how we know him looks like a wig yeah I'm almost certain it is his real hair but it looks like a wig which is uh, there's a severe mental disconnect every time he's on screen because it's just like you're watching this really fucked up Seinfeld episode yes this is a, <laughs> it's a flashback <laughs> it's flashback to Summer of George 81 <laughs> George has got post-traumatic stress disorder! <laughs> George is getting traumatised! <laughs> 
It's so, so bizarre <laughs> to see George Costanza, like... But uh, but exactly the same, just younger. Yeah. Head, but exactly the same. I George just can only assume that basically... He Larry was given... David Wynn <laughs> played that character yeah. that you played in the burning. <laughs> I can only assume that basically he wasn't given much direction. Mm. Like I think they hired him because of his personality. Yeah, and a lot and of that, his personality. And that just is who he yeah, is. Yeah, and that's just and yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of what he um, is is goes into into George Costanza, but also he's just got to play it like he plays George Costanza a little bit more like Larry David. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but all I could think of was I kind of want to see a slasher movie with Larry David. <laughs> oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> um... What are you doing? You're stabbing me? What's he doing? What? That'd be amazing. So, yeah, so you've got him. You've also got Fisher Stevens, who very problematically played the Indian guy in the Short Indian Circuit. The Indian guy in Short Circuit, and also Phoebe's psychiatrist boyfriend and yeah. friends. And he was also in an episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. And uh, I guess he's like what you would consider a successful working actor if he's pretty much been working since the early 80s. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. And you've also got Holly Hunter in yeah. literally two scenes, I want to say. But it's clearly you her. Like, you can really oh, yeah, see yeah, you flash past her. him. It's just like, oh, yeah, there, oh, yeah. Then we come to some of the, the issues with, like, you know, it's the early 80s. Mm-hmm. Attitudes were different. Um, yeah. But um, we're kind of watching it with hindsight because this was an early Miramax. Early Miramax. And it was... Uh, uh, so, editorial control... Created, created by, by and produced by, produced by, produced by Harvey, Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein. And with um, that lens on it, there are some bits of this film that are just like, Ooh. yeah, it's really, it's really, really uncomfortable. I mean, very, very early on, there's the shower scene with a. Hopefully, the actress was of age. Well, she must have been of age, otherwise she wouldn't have been able to find a copy of it. But, like, she, yeah, clearly, but, but she's like, clearly not playing of yeah. age, which I, I made me feel very uncomfortable. And there's a lot of kind of. Men forcing themselves on. It's like, hey, you just been frigid, kind of. Thing. Yeah, yeah, and it, it, and then there's also a thing. The male camp counselor is always like, going, oh, you know, boys will be boys. Yeah, you know, and the girls are like going, no, <laughs> yeah. this is completely out of order. Yeah, and it's really difficult to watch this <laughs> this movie knowing uh, what has transpired, mm. and you're going through. I think in the movie. You're supposed to side with the with the with the male camp counselor, mm-hmm. but actually the female camp counselor is absolutely right. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, this is really out of order. People shouldn't behave like this. Yeah, it's and it's really even to the point of right at the end when one of the camp counselors, one of the female camp counselors, turns up covered in blood with a traumatized yeah, children behind her, going like, "There's a murder out there," and you go like, "Oh come on, just come calm on. down." Yeah. You've got to be things. She's like, "Yeah, yeah, what the fuck? Like, it's I'm really covered in blood." <laughs> it's um. <laughs> Actually, this, the probably my f- my favorite funny scene from the movie is after they discover a raft full of bodies. Mm. Basically, it cuts to red, and then they just pan across <laughs> the thing, like in you know, like in Saving Private Ryan, there is all the, the, the dead bodies, but it's just <laughs> just crying, but it's just children. crying children, just like oh god, this is so. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> it was it's, so the, it's something that you don't see very often. No, but it, I think I don't think it was meant as a bunch of traumatized was, children. I don't think it was meant as funny, but like no, 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 having funny. seen as many movies as I have, like mm. I could not could not help but consider it a really, really funny, accidentally funny scene. Yes, yes. In general, I found it really entertaining. Mm. I thought everyone was pretty good. Tom Savini did good, oh, amazing, good effects. special effects job. Great effects. The fingers. Oh. So good. That dude from Law and Order was in it. <laughs> dude from Law and Order? <laughs> yeah, the guy, the, the the streetwise guy. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean everybody was, you know, I'd, I'd say above average for a slasher film. Because slasher films, you, I mean, in the start of it, everybody is really acting. Like a lot of the kids are like, you know, a lot of the like facial expressions and stuff like that. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, it's very, very kind of kid actor. But I imagine a lot of people, this was like their first film role, you know, yeah, so yeah, they were oh, probably yeah, no just, doubt, no you know, didn't have a lot of screen experience. Yeah, you yeah. know. But it's just such a difficult movie to. There's so many, there's so many layers to it now mm. that are not there because the filmmaking is like above average and it makes you think, you know. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Enough yeah. real life stuff has passed. Yeah, yeah. That it makes you kind of reflect. Attitude, it. yeah. Attitudes and more have changed so much that it's just. 
yeah, you do think twice about it now, whereas maybe at the time, like when this came out, if I'd have been of that age of your average kind of slasher viewer at that point, kind of, you know, 15, 16, whatever you would have been, yeah, none of that would have seemed problematic, I don't think. I mean, when you're that young, this stuff just washes over yeah. you anyway. You, yeah, don't really, like that, yeah. you don't really think about it until you're a little bit older anyway. Mm. I mean, is there is there a, like a is there a Polanski movie which involves young girls? I I don't know, I, I, I'm not that familiar with his body of work, if I'm honest. I'm trying to think. Like, I don't think I've ever watched a. I mean, there's Death and the Maiden, which is a really, really excellent movie. Mm. But and as much as you're not really supposed to like Polanski. Sigourney Weaver is amazing in that movie. She's right. like she does it, uh, but the story is that a guy comes to the door, and she recognizes the voice, uh, as of a man who kidnapped her and uh, assaulted her. Right. And her husband doesn't believe her, but she's convinced, okay. and she basically kidnaps this guy. And that guy is played by Ben Kingsley. Oh, nice. And it's um, it's a really thing, but you do have to watch it if this woman traumatized by an assault. Mm. With the layer yeah, yeah, yeah. that Polanski has, Polanski is a rapist. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think that's the closest that I can come to. And you can watch the burning and see uh, men forcing themselves on, yeah, on on women. Yeah, in this day and age, you cannot see it without that in your head of just. Well, like, you can uh, you can watch it anyway. It's like well, seeing like his level of invo- of that guy level of that guy's involvement on the whole movie. It's really difficult to to watch it, and it kind of. I'm consistently troubled of what to do with work that is made by people who are clearly assholes. Yeah. I don't have a clear-cut solution of what to do with this. No, not at all. I don't know, for me, anyway, it didn't take the entire movie because I managed to make a disconnect and was just sitting watching the Slash film. Yeah. Again, very much my speed. I, I, it, it takes a certain disconnect of your brain to just enjoy one of these things anyway because they're just dumb, violent fun. Yeah for the most part. And, like it, part and it does the, take me back to being a young kid and watching these kind of yeah, things when like, you're not supposed to and just like, ooh, ooh. Kind I'd of say almost certainly a lot of this stuff is like n- 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 nostalgic of like yeah. first watching like horror movies and like, yeah, ooh, yeah, yeah. So That's very much what it felt like watching this. It was, yeah, it, yeah. It, it put me right back in that mindset. Yeah, definitely, like, likewise. When I first saw like, you know, the Friday 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street and stuff like that. Which is, which I can disconnect my brain like that and I did really fucking enjoy this film for that reason. Cause, yeah, because it is like we said, absolute boilerplate, standard slasher, brilliant. Turn your brain off and just hope the kills are good. Story, yeah. a dude got fucked over and decides to fuck over. Yeah, as long as it's not boring, I guess yeah, yeah. that's all you want. And this certainly wasn't boring. To... No, it wasn't boring. No, it, it moved along at quite a fucking fair clip. The kills were good. The effects were fucking brilliant. You want to score it? Yeah, I can do. Okay, what would you give it for the story? <laughs> um, one because it is. It's just, it is what it is. There wasn't really any twists or turns to it. We knew who he was straight away. You know, did we know or did we guess? Well, no, the first scene is he's the, the caretaker. The kids burnt him. Yeah. And then so you know, I'm we, gonna we find up... out, what, 20, 30 minutes in the Cropsy thing, and which I didn't even know about Cropsy was a thing. But the, you didn't know about the urban legends of Cropsy? No, I don't know anything oh, well, there's a cool. I'll docu- look into it. There's a cool documentary called Cropsy, which I recommend. I will um, certainly watch that. And uh, you should um, watch it. But yeah, um, but apart from that, it's your absolute standard story. Kids trying to get away from a murderer. Some of them do, some of them don't. I'm going to rate it a little bit higher because I like the characterizations. Like I thought, it felt like a comp- like if I read this as a book, I'll go, yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. So I'm going to give it a three. Mm. Not very average score, but a, 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 th- a three or one less. Okay, mm. for gore, what would you give it for gore? Ooh. Now, I'm teetering between a three or a four. Personally, I would have liked a little bit more. But, for instance, the bit where they find the canoe. Yeah. And he just whips out and just cuts down like four or five of them in a row. There are some choice moments. In yeah. There. The fingers coming off a brilliant, the head, the forehead slice is. Wow. The yeah, most, the like most really, used. <laughs> yeah. It was. Uh, it was. There's, uh, there's some really nice ones that you don't see an awful lot. Some of them are absolute standard. You know, it's got a pair of shears. It's going to stick them through somebody's neck. Yes, you expect to see that happening. But him actually swinging the blade at somebody and it cutting across their yeah, core. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, damn, I haven't seen that before. That's yeah, no, sweet. I thought it was really well done and it was really. And really, they were re- really. It was grisly. Yeah, the blood was thick. Yeah. It wasn't you know, too red. It yeah, wasn't uh, paint. No, no, very much so. Uh, I'm going to go a four then. Actually. Yeah, I. I mean, Savini. 
Yeah. To do really I think it's a really good Savini job, and I'm also yeah. going to give it a four. Yes. For the creativity of the, of the movie. Well, see, again, this is kind of like the story bit. It's very, very boilerplate, but the creativity of the kills. I mean, not everybody that I thought would die did die. I've got three. She's kind of average. I'm going to go for a three as well because yeah. it was pretty average, but I liked the. Ca- yeah, I, I actually like... feel bad about the story one. I want to go back. You want to? Okay, feel... I actually want to go to a three on that as well because I... you want to go for a three on the yeah, story. Yeah, because it's average. One makes it sound okay. like I was saying it was boring, and actually that's not true. Okay, a logical sense. Five. Yeah, I think this absolutely made one hundred. Oh no, wait. The dude would be pissed. Wait. Oh, there's that weird bit in the cabin. In yeah, the, in, in the, the very last scene, wood shopping bit. There's where, a bit where it starts editing, and the it seems to be completely out of joint. A the minecart thing that nearly hit him is to be back up on the top yeah. of the ramp, and whilst foe Scott Ian is pinned to the wall, yeah, there appears to be hands around his throat. But the guy's yeah, the guy's it. swinging a pickaxe at him, and no, no, he's not swinging a pickaxe. He's got a flamethrower. Yeah, no, 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 cropsy has got a flamethrower. Yeah, but, but he's also got a hand round... He's yeah, holding yeah, a flamethrower yeah. with both yeah, hands. Yeah, Todd is swinging an axe. Yeah, and he's also holding the guy by the throat. Yeah, so how's he doing yeah, all that? Yeah, it was the really physics, confusing. Yeah, the physics don't And then like they it. had to cut in uh, the dead body of a girl for a scare, but it was clearly yes. um, shot outside, and yeah. they kind of and cut it was, around Yeah, it. it was a still fur that was then cropped around really badly, so you could still see trees around the edge of her head. Yeah, it was really weird. Was so really I think odd. it loses a point for okay, that. Okay, we'll lose a point on that four, then. That's a four. Yeah, lots uh, of this four. And for the there. music. Didn't notice it. Okay. Again, um, it's your standard... I mean, it's not, you know, like, Friday the 13th, he's iconic, mainly because it's got... I mean, these slasher films are, are generally just... It's a, th- it's a repetition on the kind of Jaws theme of just like, killer, killer, killer. Uh, he's a yeah. danger, danger. I mean, it's very synth- It's by Rick Wakeman from Yes. Yeah. And it's very synthesizer heavy, and it's pretty effective when it's minimal. But I didn't really like the main theme. No. And again, it's. But I like these I little flourishes. I already can't remember it. That I like. There were little flourishes, for example, when they're being told the campfire story, and then one of the counselors mm-hmm. jumps out and scares them all. Yeah. And then they're all kind of going, "Oh, you motherfucker!" <laughs> yeah, George says That's motherfucker. George, yeah, George does say motherfucker. <laughs> and then the kind of music kind of swells like to a nice resolve. So like, going, ah, you know, they're just kids in the wood and they're having fun, mm. which is like, I think Rick Wakeman is actually would actually have been pretty good at film scores. I don't know how many he did. But I think he was pretty. Good. I think it was. A pre, it was pretty good, though it was pretty standard. So I'm going to give it a three. It was all right, but I can't remember it, so I'm going to say two. Okay. Just because it just it doesn't leap out, and like I already can't remember it, and it's like what five minutes later. So in total, we scored this a thirty-three out of fifty. Okay. That's Is that pretty higher high. than average. It's higher than <laughs> normal appreciation shit that we watch. Yeah, and again, you know, it's there's a few things that whether it's. I don't, know, I don't know the proper way to put it because it's American, it's a certain type of film stock, it's a certain genre and everything like that. It just feels so comfortable and so... Yeah, and it's like when the film usual. started, you burst out, this looks like an actual movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whereas you can't say that for every single that we've seen. No. You know, again, you know, I don't I don't mind... I mean, fuck, go back to the Beyond episode, like, I fucking love that shit. But this is just so familiar. It's yeah, yeah. a comfy pair of socks. It's, it's just like, ah... Oh. The warm blanket, man. Just like, an, oh, I know exactly how this is gonna go, and it, and it and it absolutely delivered on that. So, so I guess the final thing is, uh, would 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 you recommend it? This film, Steve. Do you know? What? I absolutely would. Uh, Problematic, yes, but like if you've got your mates over, having a couple of drinks, whatever. This is definitely one you can throw on, and it's a good one. <laughs> it moves along at a fair clip. I think if you've already watched all the Friday the Thirteenth. If you're very sensitive, you can it might, one of these on. It, 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 there's probably a lot of trigger warnings that yeah. should be... Uh, maybe uh, maybe, to, maybe turn away at the, the shower scene at the start. Oh, there's probably a lot of trigger warnings that needed to be there just because of the context of the movie. Mm-hmm. But overall, I think if you're having a movie marathon of, like, 80s movies, yeah. I would include it. I would absolutely include it. Yeah. And, then, and I think maybe we're being... We may be being... I think if you take his name out of the credits... It maybe wouldn't be so prevalent in your forebrain. Honestly, when, I don't think if like it. if I hadn't seen his name in the credits, I probably would, like. And this is on me. This is particularly bad. I probably wouldn't have even thought about it. Yeah, you know, yes, it's problematic anyway. 
in real life. Well, this is in a movie, and it's like they're supp- it's supposed to point out that the dudes are dicks, and the women are just a kind of no, 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 no means no kind of thing, and the dudes are being dicks. Yeah, which is character building anyway. But yes, because of the wine scene bit on the. Just- yeah, it's so like it's a weird thing. But it's fingering a, color, color yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. But, yeah, a couple of beers, stick it on with a bunch of mates. I, I don't... You don't have to drink beer, you could also drink a, a nice wine. Or a vodka. Uh, v- vodka and wine. <laughs> <laughs> vodka, scotch and wine. Yeah, it's called a, a, a vo- Harcliffe cocktail. <laughs> a Harcliffe cocktail. You get a, glass, get a shot of vodka, a shot of very cheap whiskey, Bells, mm. or Famous Grouse, mm. and then some uh, Blossom Hill <laughs> yeah. red wine. That's nice And then uh, a Chardonnay. A Chardonnay. <laughs> And and then you <laughs> drink it all down real quick and follow it up with a Lambert and Butler. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a that's a Harcliffe brandy right there. That's a fucking Harcliffe cocktail right there. Okay. Cool. That's a good note to end on. Let's finish this shit. All right. Bye. Bye then. Bye. 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 Love you. Bye.